Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we are doing a tutorial video on dividing decimals by whole numbers. This, of course, is from MathDrills.com. They have tons of great resources and worksheets, so make sure to check them out in the link below. So, uh, just a quick summary. If you are new to long division, it would help if you had some background in it or at least know how to divide. But I'm going to kind of break it down at the simplest uh, steps just in case you're unfamiliar. So, what we're going to do here is if we have... 1.29 divided by 6, okay? If we look at the number line real quick, we have 0, we have 6 here. 1.29 is right here. So 1.29 is much smaller than 6. So it's not going to go, uh, if 6 doesn't go, fit into 1.29. One thing that helps with this understanding also, and I would recommend doing this, is write your multiples of 6. So you can see here, right away, if we multiply 6 times 1, we get 6. That's already bigger than 1.29. So what do we do? Well, the first thing you're going to do as you approach this problem is I would go ahead and just plop that decimal right there. Okay, so we're going to just take it up. We're going to plop that decimal down. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to consider 6 going into, okay, is it a multiple of? What do we multiply 6 by to get each one of these digits? So if we do 6 times something equals 1, well, nothing. Nothing times uh, 6 will equal 1. It's too big. So we're going to write a 0 right there. Now, if we write a 0, that means we need to consider the next two digits, okay? Or not the next two, but the first two digits. We're going to add on a digit, and we're going to think to ourselves, okay, 6 times what equals 12? So that's why these multiples are useful. We're going to look up here, and we're going to see that 6 times 2 equals 12. So what I'm going to write here is I'm going to write this 2, and any time I write um, a number right there in the above line, I'm going to multiply it by the number out in front. Okay, so that's 6 times that 2. I'm going to write that number right there. Okay, so 6 times 2, I'm going to write that there, and I get 12. Now, what I'm doing is I'm trying to see how much is left over. So now I do 12 minus 12, and I know that equals 0. I have 0 left over. It went into 12 perfectly. But guess what? I'm not done with this number, 1.29. I still have this 9 to take care of. So I'm going to drop this 9 down. Now, I look up here. I think to myself, what times 6 equals 9? And you're going to notice there's nothing. Okay, 9's not up here in this. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to go at least as close as I can to it without going over. So now 6 times 1 equals 6. That's as close as I can get. Whoops, not 6. We're going to put 1. So 1 times 6, again, I'm going to do 1 times that 6. Write that answer there, and that is 6. I subtract, and this time I'm going to have something left over. I have 3. Now, you can't just put remainder 3. That's the temptation. You probably learned that initially that, okay, we have remainder 3 because 6 doesn't go into 3. Okay, you'll see up here, it's not a, um, 3 is not a multiple of 6. However, since we're doing division with decimals, we need to continue the pattern. Remember how we dropped down that 9? Well, there's nothing left to drop down, or is there? We can make this... 1.290 without changing the value. So now what we're going to do instead, instead of dropping down nothing, we're going to drop down 0. So we're going to drop down this 0, just like we dropped down the 9 before. And now we have 30. Well, guess what? We can have 6 go into 30. Look up here. 6 times 5 equals 30. So we're going to put the 5 up here. And then, like I said, we're going to multiply 6 times 5 and write that answer right in there. So I put the 30, I subtract, and now I get 0. Once I get 0, I'm satisfied, I'm good. I don't need to do any more work because 0 0.25 is going to be my answer. Get rid of this remainder. We're not using remainders in this decimal division worksheet. So we're going to move on. Actually, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next one because it's still 6. So we can use our multiples here. And we'll go a little bit faster this time, less highlighting, etc. So the first step, 6 goes into 9. Well, actually, 6 does go into 9. It goes in one time. So we're going to put, I forgot a step. Did you catch it? You got to put the decimal down right away. So go ahead and put this decimal down. I went ahead and did that. And now I can continue what I was doing. 6 goes into 9 one time, and that is 6. I multiply the 6 times the 1. Now I find out how much is left over. It's 3. I drop down the next number. We're not just talking about 6 into 9. We're talking about 6 into 9.51. So I drop down the next digit. I know 6 goes into 35. doesn't go in exactly, but it goes in 5 times. Now, when I multiply 6 times 5, I get 30. This time, again, I'm going to have something left over. 
it's 5. 35 minus 30 is 5. Now I'm going to drop down the 1. So now I have 51. So how many times does 6 go into 51? Well, I could continue my pattern here. So 7, that's 42. 8 is 48. And if I go to 9, it's going to take me too much. So I know it's 8. 8 times 6 is 48. And I get 3. It looks like I'm done. I don't put remainder 3, though. I need to add a 0 here. Okay, and I'm going to drop this 0 down to make this 30. That's a little bit easier for us to handle. And I already know, look, it's already highlighted for me. I know it goes in five times. So I put the five there. I know that's 30. Six times five is 30. I subtract and I get zero. And that's how I do this. Maybe I'll do another one. Let's go ahead and just move on to number three. And again, if you have a question on any of these other numbers, go ahead and leave a comment and I'll happily help you. Actually, I might look for one that has a zero. Looks like we have this one. Okay, I'm gonna actually move to this one because it's got a zero in it. And it's just a little bit different. It's not. It's basically the same process, but I just thought I'd cover it. So again, plop our decimal down. Eight does not go into five, so I need to consider the next two, uh, the first two digits together. I put the zero there first because it goes in zero times. Now eight goes into 50. I know it goes in six times, and that's 48. Again, if you want, maybe write your multiples of eight. That might help you, okay? But I'm just gonna use what I, you know, my background knowledge. So I have uh, 50 minus 48. That's two, I'm gonna drop down the nine, and now I have 29. Well, it looks like it goes in three times. Okay, and this is four. Uh, it goes in three times, and that is 24, after I multiply that three times that eight. I'm gonna subtract here, 29 minus 24 is five. I'm gonna put a zero here, and I'm gonna drop this zero down. Okay, so now I have uh, eight into 50. Well, guess what, that's the same thing, it's six, and that is gonna be 48, okay? And then I get two. So now I have two, and I have to add another zero. So I'm gonna drop this zero down, okay? You can repeat, keep repeating this process with the zeros until you get an even uh, no remainder. So I have 20, eight goes into 20 two times, and that's 16. Well, then I get four, and then I'm gonna drop down another zero. Okay, I'm actually glad I did this problem. So now I have eight goes into 40 five times, and that is finally no remainder, okay? So I get no remainder, and my answer is gonna be 0 0.63625. So we hope you enjoyed this video. If, again, if you have any other questions on this worksheet, leave a comment. If you need any help with any other math content, go ahead and check out my channel. I also have a math drills playlist, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.